Next up, we have the Microtech SXT SQ Lite, one of Microtech's cheapest offerings for Wi-Fi bridges. I bought a pair of these for about 123 Canadian dollars from ispsupplies.ca, but you can check out Microtech's website for a list of authorized stores. You'll notice Amazon is not on that list, so don't get Microtech stuff from Amazon, since Microtech relies on the seller for some basic support. Most of Microtech's products, including routers, wireless equipment, and switches, will run RouterOS. Their operating system jam-packed full of every feature you could possibly need. It's not the prettiest user interface to most, but it gives you many different ways to interact with the devices, including a web interface, a smartphone app, Windows desktop app, and command line. Most of these features are overkill on a simple bridge like this, but for some setups it's handy to add extra firewalling or speed limiting without extra equipment. Microtech is also quite good about supporting their devices with updates for a long time. Microtech offers this model in both 2.4 and 5 GHz versions. We'll be working with a 5 GHz version, though you can also get the 2.4 GHz model for about $10 cheaper per unit. The small case feels solid and has three different mounting points for vertical and horizontal poles or other rounded surfaces you can strap it to with the included hose clamp. If you want to mount it to a flat surface like a wall, you will need to use some kind of extra bracket. The LEDs on the back shine through the case plastic, which can be better for waterproofing than having them behind a sticker. The lights on the back are also pretty generous, with five dedicated for signal strength, which can make aligning these easier. Like other cheaper bridges, the performance on these is limited by the 100 megabit Ethernet port, which can definitely be a bottleneck on the 5 GHz version. The included PoE injector is pretty compact and allows you to easily run it from the included 24 volt adapter, or you can attach your own DC power supply between 10 and 30 volts, which makes it pretty flexible for being powered by some sort of solar power system. Here I'm showing you can run it from a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, or even from a USB-C power bank with the right USB PD adapter with a barrel jack plug. The one I put together here is outputting 20 volts. Configuration can be trickier and more verbose on the Microtech equipment, but they have a quick set feature in the software for quickly setting up each side for common configurations. We'll be using the quick set feature first, and then I'll quickly run through what it's actually doing behind the scenes, which should be useful if you want to do some fine tuning or troubleshooting. On the computer, we'll need to download the free Winbox software from Microtech.com's software page. This is Windows software, but Microtech ensures that it will work with the Wine compatibility layer on Mac and Linux machines. They even have some videos on their YouTube channel showing how to do this. We're going to configure the access point side first. We'll attach a network cable to the PoE injector, connect the other end to either of the bridges, and then we're going to plug the short cable on the PoE injector into the computer. We're going to open up Winbox and go to the Neighbors tab. This will show all Microtech devices connected to your computer or home network. There should only be one device in here. If you click on its entry in the MAC address column, it should copy that to the Connect To box. We'll want to connect to it by the MAC address because it means we won't have to mess with your PC's network settings, and it lets us work with a completely blank device. Since the default login is admin with no password, you can just click on Connect to access its settings. A window should pop up asking if you want to remove the default configuration, which we'll do since those settings are more for setting it up as a router. If this window doesn't pop up, you can manually clear the configuration by going to the system menu, then reset configuration, making sure to check off no default configuration, click reset configuration, and wait for it to reboot. Winbox should automatically reconnect once it's booted back up. We will open the quick set page and in the top left corner of the window we'll select PTP Bridge AP. We can fill everything in at once so I'll put in the wireless network or SSID in here. Pick a frequency or just leave it to auto. Leave the band alone here. Pick the channel width and select the country. In my case I'll pick Canada 2, the new improved Canada that we don't want the rest of the world to know about. We'll then check off the WPA2 security and fill in the password. We can then put in our static IP address information. You can also give it a name and a password if you want. Click apply when you're done. A few seconds after clicking apply, Winbox may disconnect briefly and reconnect as it does all its configuration in the background. Since we're all done with this unit, we can close out of the Winbox window. We'll then move on to the second unit, which will be the client side. We're going to plug in the second unit into its PoE injector, Unplug the first unit from the computer and plug the second one in. 
make sure to leave the first one powered up before moving on. We'll open up Winbox again, go to the neighbors list, and find the second device. Once again, clicking on the MAC address to copy it to the connect to field, and then we'll connect. Just like the first one, when we get to the default configuration window, we'll remove the configuration, then open Quickset. This time we're going to be picking PTP Bridge CPE. We'll adjust the country here, and Winbox will probably disconnect at this point as it changes some settings in the background, but give it a moment and it will reconnect automatically. You should see the SSID for the bridge you configured earlier, so click on it in the list and then enter the WPA2 key you set, then click connect. In a moment it should connect and show some stats. You can then configure your static IP address information on the right side of the window, then click apply. You can now connect the other PoE injector to your home router. At this point, you should be able to access each of them using their IP address with Winbox or a web browser. Your computer should also have internet access. Now that it's all set up and working, I'll quickly run through the settings that Quickset put in behind the scenes. First off, it added a bridge, which can join ports together like a virtual network switch and allow them to pass data between themselves. In the ports tab of this window, you can see that the ethernet port and the wireless interface were added to the bridge. In the wireless configuration, we'll open up the wireless interface. On the wireless interface, the mode will be station bridge, which is the client mode. On the AP side, it'll have the bridge mode selected, which is essentially just acting as an AP with the limit of one client, but otherwise it will have very similar wireless settings here. The rest of the settings are similar to what was in quick set. There's a status tab with some more stats. If we close out of the WLAN 1 window and go to the security profiles tab, this is where the wireless password is stored. For the IP address configuration, we would go into the IP menu and then into addresses to change the IP. To edit the DNS server, you can go into the DNS menu. To change the default route, you can go into routes, then open the quad zero static route, then edit the gateway IP. The device name is set up in the system menu under identity and the password can be updated from here as well. The SXT SQ Lite is one of the cheapest options that you can get from a better known brand that is known to keep their devices supported with software updates for a while. The hardware is well designed by being small and flexible to mount and the included accessories are decent. The wide range of voltages that can power it also add to the versatility when using it off grid or in other creative use cases. While the software is also pretty flexible, it might be a bit intimidating for beginners compared to some other options. The 74 megabits per second is a little lower than expected, though iPerf 3 uses a lot of small packets which weaker CPUs can struggle with. I expect full-sized packets common with internet traffic like file downloads and streaming video will max out the 100 megabit port. The latency is very low and consistent like many of the other 5 gigahertz products I've tested. I've used some of Microtik's 802.11n products to deliver fixed wireless internet service at work, and they work reliably even despite harsh weather. That said, the performance in busy point-to-multipoint systems with a lot of clients is not as good as some of their competitors like Cambium Networks. I would expect that using the Microtik SXT SQ Lite as a PTP bridge will do well in most home and small business situations where up to 100 megabits is needed. If you need more speed but like the form factor and features, Microtik also has the SXT SQ5AC with 802.11ac and a gigabit network port.